Welcome to Electron Online. In this video, we're going to explore the methodology of how to find the zero force members in a truss or a bridge. In other words, the members that are neither under tension nor compression. Well, there are some basic rules, and this video will cover the basic rules, and then there's some mathematical techniques, which we will look at in the next video. But here, we're going to look at the rules, and the rules are as follows. First of all, if we have a joint that has two members, and no external load and or no support, then both members are what we call zero force members. Well, here's an example. We have a joint here that has two members, but there's no load, there's no external load pushing down on the members. If that's the case, then both members must be zero force members. And one of the ways to denote that is simply put a zero on top of each of the two members. The second rule says that if a joint has two members and is loaded, so here we have a joint that has two members, but it does have a load on it, then, the first case, if an applied or resultant force is collinear with one, the other is a zero force member. Notice that the load force, and that should have said load here, let me put an L here, so the load force pushing down on this joint is collinear with this member, but not with the other member. That means the other member must be a zero force member. The second case, again, we have a joint here with two members and a load. But in this case, if an applied or resultant force is collinear with neither, in this case, you can see that it's not collinear with this one, it's not collinear with that one, then neither is a zero force member. So the force then gets transferred onto this member here and onto this member here, and so they will be under tension or compression. In this case, it looks like those two members would be under compression. And then the third rule says as follows, if a joint has three members, so here we have an example of a joint that has three members, and no external force or load, there's no external force or load either on top here or hang down from the bottom, then if two of the members are collinear, then the third member, the non-collinear member, is a zero force member. So notice here that these two members are collinear, but the third one is not, which means the third one, which is not collinear with the other two, and the other two are collinear with each other, that means this member is a zero force member. You would be surprised how many cases you'll find like that where you can identify a zero force member. You may wonder why you need those members there if they're zero force members. It turns out that the overall structural strength of the trusses or bridges is better if those members are there just in case some forces act on them that would cause them to hold the whole structure together. So it's usually for better structural strength, but they don't necessarily carry a load for any particular purpose other than just making the structure a stronger, more resilient structure overall. So those are the basic rules. On the next video, we'll see a mathematical way of determining whether or not a member is a zero force member or not. For example, if none of these rules can be applied to a particular structure, how do you figure out if a force is a zero member? And we'll see that on the next video.